Clay Burke. I'm a teacher, a writer, and most of my work focuses on making this world a little bit more inclusive for disabled people. I started school on the day of my fourth birthday. That was the 19th of September, 1994. Now you're probably trying to work out what age I am, because you're really smart. I'll tell you, I'm 29. But that very first day of school, well, it was a little bit scary. I am a little person. I stand at the height of three feet, five inches tall. And for my whole life, I have been smaller than everybody else. And in terms of my disability, all that is different than maybe me and you is that my arms and my legs are shorter. Nobody gets to choose what it is that they look like in many ways. I mean, when I was born, I didn't get a checklist. I didn't get to choose to be a woman. I didn't get to choose to have brown hair or brown eyes. I didn't get to choose to be born in Ireland. I didn't get to choose to be disabled. I didn't get to choose my family. So much of who we are and where we are, we actually don't take part in. But what we do get to choose is how we behave to ourselves and to each other. And going into school on that first day and knowing that I was different to everybody else, I was worried. But the girls in my class, they were brilliant. They just welcomed me to the class, we opened up our workbooks and we got started. I loved school. And I think it was on that very first day that I decided that I wanted to be a teacher. When I started college, there were people concerned that maybe teaching would be difficult for me. Maybe it would be harder. Maybe the boys and girls wouldn't respect me or listen to me because they were gonna be bigger than I was. And I was supposed to be the teacher. Even something as simple as in my classroom, we didn't have desks and chairs laid out like this. Everything was in a U shape and I would stand at the front of the room so that everybody could see me and I could see everybody. But because I was smaller, we are all at eye level, maybe in the way that you and I are now. And that changed everything in the class because I wasn't the big adult at the front of the room speaking down and looking down. We were kind of all the same. I haven't told you everything about me because while I wanted to always be a teacher, I had another interest too. I loved and still love fashion. So around the same time that I was training to be a teacher, I started writing a blog. And a blog is just a space on the internet that is yours to write about the things that interest you. So I started writing about fashion, never thinking that anybody would read it. And it started this conversation that at the time, I had no idea would change my life. I got to go to New York and give a big talk called a TED Talk, which is where you stand in one spot for 10 minutes and tell the world something that they have never heard about before. I've also got to be on the front cover of Vogue, which is a big magazine. Found myself picked by Meghan Markle who was the Duchess of Sussex. And she chose me to be on the cover of Vogue. And I was the first little person ever to be on the cover of Vogue. One of the really big moments for me was going to the Met Gala. It's the kind of party where you know everybody there, probably because you went to see their film in the cinema Maybe you listened to their music on Spotify, or maybe you saw them on a magazine. They're kind of very famous people. And I was invited. It was the first time ever that somebody like me got to go. I wore this amazing dress. It was black velvet with blue satin bows over here. I had a tiara on, and it was all made by Gucci. But that dress is now in a museum. It's in Italy, in the Gucci Museum. And they had to make a mannequin to fit that dress to display. One of the other cool projects that I got to do was, I got this email that said, 
The President of the United States would like to invite you to the White House. It was President Obama, just to be specific about it. But I didn't think it was real, so I ignored it. A week later, I got another email. It said, Dear Sinead, President Obama would really like to know if you'll be coming to the White House. And I thought, hmm, maybe I should reply. So I did very quickly and said, yes, of course, I will definitely be at the White House. So when I went to meet the Obamas, I think we talk a lot about kindness. And sometimes we don't expect leaders or very important people to be kind. But actually, it's probably more important that they're kind than anything else. When I get to meet people who are successful or of note, I'm always so impressed with how kind they are. Whether that is the Obamas, or Jacinda Ardern, who is the Prime Minister of New Zealand, or members of the royal family, taking the time to really listen to people, to not just ask them how they are and to move on with the conversation, but to say, what's interesting you? What are you doing right now? How can I help? I think that's something we all need to learn more how to do. And I got some great M&Ms from the White House. I keep them safe. What I've learned is that when people say that things are impossible, it just means that they haven't thought of another way. Everybody said I couldn't be a teacher or I couldn't work in fashion. And I couldn't, not in the traditional old way of being a teacher, of working in fashion but I could find my way how to do it. Just dream enormously big. If you could do anything, what would it be? And then work backwards to figure out how. It's easier than it sounds.